Dunstable was born of roads and transport and flourished for centuries. Then when the railways killed the stagecoach business, Dunstable fell asleep. It slept for nearly a hundred years, and it was the arrival of a new era of roads and road transport that woke it up. The motorway age and the motor industry. Now that sleepy little town of 15 years ago is wide awake and kicking. By an odd quirk of fate, prosperity drifted into Dunstable over the town's border. The border, that is, that divides it from the motor town of Bedfordshire, Luton. Luton was once a tiny, almost insignificant neighbour. But then Dunstable made the mistake of rejecting railways. Trains, they said, would never replace stagecoaches. But Luton disagreed, and Luton's never looked back. And when its motor industry arrived, it grew and grew and grew until finally it burst over the border into Dunstable. The result is that Dunstable now plays a key part in Britain's manufacture of lorries and vans. The bulk of the town's working population is employed in the industry. Many of them work here at Commer. Others work across the road at Vauxhall or in the numerous other factories in the town that make vehicle components. Most of these men are on piecework and they earn from 20 to 25 pounds for a 40 hour week, up to 50% more than the national average wage. It's a long nut time now since the motor trade suffered a serious recession. The big order books mean regular high wages. High wages have brought a sense of security to the industry and both security and prosperity are reflected in the life of the town. Fat wage packets attract shops, and Dunstable has a large number. Still more are being built, not only to meet the demands of Dunstable's 27,000 people, but to attract customers from all round this rapidly developing district. Ever since Luton became a county borough, Dunstable has set its sights on becoming the leading town of South Bedfordshire, for cultural activities as well as shopping. This is its new civic centre. Spacious, modern, colourful and elegant. This, the civic hall, was built at a cost of about £350,000. At the moment, it's the focal point of Dunstable's new image. It's the centrepiece of the town's plan to leap into the future, complete with a traffic system designed to cope with the problems of the future. In one way, it seems to be a reaction against the town's lost 100 years. In another, it's also a memorial to the fact that the first miracle play seen in Britain was acted here at Dunstable. The setting of the hall is beautiful, and its use is many, but not everybody in Dunstable approves of it. The Civic Hall is only part of a bigger plan to redevelop the complete town centre, and the entire scheme is the subject of controversy. The M1 is the third great road in Dunstable's life. The first was the Icknield Way that crossed the county from Wiltshire to Norfolk. 
Then the Romans built Watling Street. And it was at the point that Watling Street crossed the Ickneald Way that Dunstable grew up. Travellers used to use the Priory that was once part of this church. It was a rule of the Priory that bed and board should be provided for all travellers free of charge. Now, Watling Street has always been one of the busiest roads to London, and it was the very economics of this rule that finally helped to reduce the Priory to poverty. Shortly before the dissolution of the monasteries, Archbishop Cranmer came here to judge the extraordinary proceedings by which Henry VIII divorced Queen Catherine of Aragon. The writing of divorcement was fixed to the church door. Later, when stagecoaches speeded travel, Dunstable, occupying this key crossroads position, grew into a sizable town. Business was brisk and the town prosperous. Life seemed so perfect that few people here either wanted or believed in change. So they rejected the railways. Now the M1 has brought Dunstable within an hour's ride of London. Hundreds of Londoners have come to live and work here, knowing that they're only a short time away from the city and that they can buy houses in Dunstable for a thousand pounds less than they can in London. There are plans for thousands of London's overspill population to move into the area. Dunstable is making every effort to encourage the newcomers to spend their money in the town. Dunstable and district can offer many attractions. It was in the latter days of Dunstable's Rip Van Winkle era that the gliders arrived, soaring silently in the sky over the town, as if in fear of disturbing its slumbers. This was the first gliding centre established in the country, and it brought yet another aspect of transport and travel to the life of the town. Only a few of the pilots live locally. Many travel down from London, and in fact the club is known as the London Gliding Club. The area is ideal as a gliding centre. It's easy to get to by road, its landing strip is right beside the Dunstable Downs, and the surrounding land creates just the right warm air currents to give the gliders their lift. It's a sport that's becoming more and more popular. Apart from its obvious attractions and excitement, it's the perfect way of avoiding the all too often noisy, frustrating clamour of the roads below. Just as many of the 400 members of the London Gliding Club come from miles and miles around to glide over the scenic Dunstable Downs, so too do many of the people who watch from the slopes. Though it's a fairly expensive hobby, it has an obvious fascination that adds to the attraction the Downs have held for men throughout history. 
But the biggest single attraction that brings fleets of cars and coaches along Dunstable's famous roads is this, the Whipsnade Zoo. Nearly three quarters of a million people come here every year. Some come for a week at a time, many for bank holiday treats, and others on day trips from schools throughout the region. And there's plenty to see. Whipsnade is internationally famous for its open plan cages that are spread over 500 acres of the downs. The main roads that cut across the district have always made the zoo easily accessible. And ever since it opened in 1931, the crowds of visitors have been getting bigger and bigger. Now the M1 has brought it within reach of still more people. In an odd way, the constant streams of visitors who come here to the zoo to watch the gliding or merely to sit in the sun on the downs are helping Dunstable to make up for lost time. Their persistent convoys, together with the other streams of traffic that go through the town and round the town, have helped Dunstable to realise its geographical importance for the second time in its history. And for a second time too, the town realises that this is its means to prosperity. Dunstable may no longer hold the reins, but it can drive, and is driving now,